Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by a New York Times bestselling author of The Dresden Files, The Codex Alera, and the steampunk series The Cinder Spire. We welcome author Jim Butcher. Hello. Let's go beyond the mic. You've written the contemporary Private Eye series with a supernatural tilt, The Dresden Files, since 2000. What makes Harry such a wonderful character to write? Well, the three-word pitch I like to give to summarize the series is Dirty Harry Potter. (laughs) Um, Everybody seems to get it right away when I say that. He's a great character because Harry Dresden, is a he's a professional wizard. Uh, He has an ad in the phone book and everything, working out of an office in Chicago uh, as a private investigator. Pretty much everybody thinks he's a crackpot and that the 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 whole wizard thing is just just a shtick to sell his services. But in fact, he is a, a real wizard. There are real monsters, and he's one of the guys that you go to when you need to deal with one. I think Harry is great. But how would you think that he has grown over these years? The one thing that he hasn't learned, I swear to God, if he could learn to keep his mouth shut for five minutes, he, his life would be so much simpler and happier. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he can't, so he winds up uh, uh, just, just making the worst enemies at, at the best times. That is really my favorite thing about him, is he's the guy who... When you're in trouble, he will stand up next to you. He will be there for you. He will defend you. And if that means that he's got to fight gods and demons to get it done, then so be it. You know, that, that's the kind of person he is. Uh, and so naturally, he gets himself in way over his head all the time, and that's just a blast to write. And uh, apparently, the readers think it's kind of fun to read. So, How was it to incorporate the paranormal into today's modern-day world? It is so much fun. Uh, for one, I get to do lots of, of research into into really weird uh, areas of, of science and pseudoscience, which are the only places that will look at a lot of uh, uh, just sort of the strange things in our own world. So I get to I get to find out all kinds of weird and cool things that, that people have learned and seen and reported uh, and bring them back and incorporate them into my stories. For a long time, I, I was really focused on, well, how do I make things that are completely unique to my story? And then I realized, well, the way I make it unique is I incorporate absolutely everything. You know, I build a story world where you can, you can totally walk in and have, you know, some monster out of Hindu lore uh, rampaging through, you know, the east side of Chicago and be able to, you know, be able to write that in and say, yep, this could totally happen here. And that's the that's the kind of story world that, that I love. You know, I, I love being able to take all these, all these disparate elements and just really cool stories from all over the world and being, being able to incorporate them into this story. As you get closer and closer to the ending of the Dresden Files and each book becomes more and more torturous for Harry... I have to ask, how fun is it to torture him? <laughs> Maybe a little. Oh my gosh! If he if he ever got to meet me, he would punch me right in the face. Because yeah, I mean that that is basically my job is just making his life more complicated. You know, I I'm, I am the chronicler of his worst weekend of every year. That is a great deal of fun because I get I just get to throw more stuff at him and. You know, whether he is dealing with weird demons from another dimension or the problem that he, that he has a daughter and she needs him to, you know, she needs him to be there for her. You know, he's got lots of different things to deal with. And, and some of them are hilarious. And some of them are humiliating. And some of them are absolutely heartbreaking. But yet he's got to face this stuff. You know, he's got to he's he's got to face all of life, not just the, the weird supernatural parts of it. It'd be so interesting and yet so torturous for Harry to have a weekend where nothing happens. Just it's a weekend. It, he's sitting, watching Maggie. Something's got to happen. Nothing happens. It would drive him crazy. Oh, oh no. At this point, I think he wouldn't look the gift horse in the mouth. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to do that. I, I'll have to do that at some point in the series. Give him a break where nothing happens for a while, just because sometimes there's a lull. And just have him go crazy during that. <laughs> like, no. Nothing's exploded or burned down in weeks. Yeah, nothing's exploded or burned down in weeks. What am I going to do? You said on social media, quote, a lot of people are concerned about the future right now. Just remember, the future has good things in store, too, unquote. Yeah. What are the good things you see right now? Well, in that particular case, I was talking about these books for my fans. And and for them, you know, that's kind of a bright spot in a year that really sucks. We all get really focused on, on the bad things that are happening. I mean, you, you look at the news, you look at, you know, you, whether you're looking online or, or on TV or in the newspaper or wherever you're looking, and it's just all bad, and, and, and everybody is just being crushed by this. You know, there's, there's good stuff coming, too. We're going to get out of this. We're going to overcome this. There's good things come, that are coming as well. Everybody needs to remember that. Have you ever gone into a con in disguise to surprise your own fans? Uh, no, no, I don't have to. I can just put on a baseball hat and walk around like a nerd and nobody knows it's me. You've written in different lands for the Dresden Files, the Codex Alera, and the Cinder Spire. Now, how fun is it for you to share these stories with your fans? Uh, 
it's deeply, it's not as much as it's fun as it's deeply satisfying to, to, to build something, you know, to build this world that nobody else has ever, has ever built or knew about. I can make absolutely anything I want to there. And um, when you get done with it and, 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 and you kind of step back from it and you see, you know, the joy and the entertainment it gives to people, uh, you know, for years and years, you know, I mean, I, I, work that I did, you know, when I was 25 uh, is still giving people, you know, satisfaction and pleasure in life. And, and that's, that is a deeply satisfying thing to know that you've done that. You know, it's not like I set off to, to help people. And, and I, and I, and I hear about that a lot. I hear, Hey, I was reading these books during a really bad time and they were, you know, they were a great distraction and a great mental painkiller for me when I really, really needed them. And thank you. And I never really set out to do that, but you know, they've grown into something that is, that has helped people. And, and I'm just writing my dumb little wizard books over here, man. I'm not trying to do anything significant or change the world. I just want people to be able to, to pay some money and have a good time and, and feel like they got their money's worth. But yeah, I mean, that's what I want. That is what I love about it. Time's running out, so it's time for the Rocky Nate. Eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that enters your mind. There is no pressure. Okay. Favorite book you've written? I know I'm asking you to pick one of your babies, but what's your favorite book that you've written? Uh, uh, I'll go ahead and go with Deadbeat. Favorite online game to play? Uh, League of Legends. Favorite Robert P. Parker book? Ooh, Searching for Rachel Wallace. Now, I've always wanted to ask, if you could have named Bob anything else in the world, what would you have named Bob? Oh, God, Bob could never have been anything else. I, I, I had Bob before I had Harry. What movie doesn't get the credit that you think it really deserves? Big Trouble in Little China. Now, what color is your lucky 20-sided die? Uh, red. It's my DM dice for killing players. <laughs> And this is where you're going to die. Uh, uh, no, I show I show them the, the I show the die the, the die the players and say this is who you're going to kill. <laughs> What's your favorite TV show right now? Um, I'll, I'll go with the Harley Quinn cartoon. As an author, I think that it's going to be easy for you to put this in words. But can you put in two words your love for animals? I like helping animals because they're actually innocent. They deserve it. Author of the Dresden Files with the latest edition, Peace Talks, available at a bookseller near you. Our friend Jim Butcher, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Hey, thank you very much. And that, my friends, is Beyond the Mic.